All right, this is Dr. Doomsday now. I am going to actually give you guys a real treat, a tour of the extreme off the grid survival van that I built. This is what I live in all the time. All right, so first off, we're gonna take a look at the, at the inside. Right here is the back area where I've got my curtains are all across, if you can see in here. Notice how I've got flat screen TV there, right? Trackball for my, you know, laptop, speakers, lighting above the, on top. All this works, all right, without, without being hooked up to the uh, electricity anywhere. This all runs off of battery and solar power and generator and uh, the alternator off the, off the uh, van itself, okay? The 1991 Dodge B350, and it was built by LEH uh, RV Company that does enhanced. Now take a look at this fine woodwork. They've got cabinetry all through it, right? Nice wood. They did a really good job uh, when they first built this. Now I just enhanced it by adding all the other stuff to it, like the the uh, solar panels. Notice I have got a power drive 1000 watt inverter that's what I, I really run everything mainly off of but they've got a secondary inverter underneath the bed here that uh, powers all the lighting and the fans see the ceiling fan all right that's very nice all right see all the fan i got some extra fans hooked up in here so that it keeps cross you breathe here and makes it really nice all right um, here i'm going to show you the, the, the uh, battery system itself See, these are North Star gel acid and uh, glass mat batteries from uh, Telecom Performance, okay? They're 180 amp hour batteries each. So that gives me 360 total amp hour storage time, all right? And now I've got them cabled up and hooked across over to the battery that's down underneath below this stuff the other stuff i got i got tools and my 100 foot extension cord if i ever do want to plus i got uh jumper cables but that's underneath that is another uh deep cycle battery for the generator which is mounted underneath which is a 2.8 onan gasoline powered generator all right it has in here behind this stuff here is a 16 gallon water tank inside which allows me to have potable water because i've got a sink with a, a single a single sink with a, a faucet a electric fuel pump, electric water pump that pumps the water in all right it has a this is where you load your potable water into it on the side got my sewer hose there for hookup because it does have a bathroom uh that right there is the exhaust port for the gasoline or a propane i should say propane heat it does have propane if i ever need it external uh plug-ins okay now you can see up top the solar power generators i mean solar power panels those panels are by rasman corporation They're very good and you look at that i made that mount out of a futon frame mounted with a uh, regular uh, u u-clamps on a pivoting base so i can actually lift them up i got a, a, a bar that holds it in place and i can rotate them to the direction of the sun for maximum absorption of, of the sun now those are 18 percent over most panels which are 10 to 12 percent so i'm getting a lot more power integration between sun transfer to electricity storage in the batteries that bar going across that is an awning that i've made i'm going to tarp on it so it can roll up and then extend out and I can actually have a covered area so that if I wanted to build a, uh, you know, have a fire down here, I can cook outside the van when it's even raining. Now, I've got a light here that allows me full access. I can actually extend this out outside for cutting wood or working on something or cooking, any of that. All right. You look at this. Now, what you see there is a wood stove that I built myself. This is an outdoor, out, an outdoor smoker, right? Now, I took the smoker and after I made the, you notice that, that is a five gallon propane tank that I've done welded a, a lid on the front, which I made bigger than the inside, which actually makes it more like airtight. 
I have retaining pins so they can't come open by accident. And inside, where I put my wood, and I can burn charcoal, uh, pellets, uh, just about any kind of fuel you want to put in here, right? Now I've got this latch on here. I've got actually another latch I'm, I'm getting put ready to put on sooner or later, which is much better, right? But holds a lot easier. The racks here can be adjustable can for a layer. If I want to put uh, a pie on one or, say, cook a pork chop on one and a pie up in a, or a cake on another, I can cook multiple items at a time, right? The temperature gauge on the front allows me to keep monitoring how much uh, heat is in there for when I'm cooking. I got a big old uh, a cast iron uh, uh, griddle plate on top along with two frying pans and a small griddle plate. And notice how I've also, on top here, I've got the uh, a coil of copper tubing because I'm in, in the process of experimenting with making a wa hot water heater with that coil. All right, got the flue dampener. And if you look up higher, I made that double wall flue out of a uh, compressor tank, which I slid the pipe through and then welded it on the outside so it doesn't leak or seal. I've got, actually I've used Gorilla Tape because it does not burn, but actually the temperature, the, the temperature of the stove reaches 700 degrees on the, on the top side surface. But up there, it's about 100 degrees because of the uh, thickness and actually I, I left it open so it can actually burn some air. Now, I also got, if you want to look, look at this, got a Norcold Tech 2 refrigerator. It actually makes ice and it keeps all my food cold. It runs all the time. I don't turn it off. The power of the system here keeps it running 24-7. That's what's really unique about this system because it's so reliable. Of course, there's my wood bin and my electric chainsaw, which runs off the system also. So I can actually cut firewood without having to buy gasoline and oil, which really saves a lot because, of course, solar power is constantly restorable. All right. Notice how I got this all tiled into around this outside. That is so it can be protected. Now I've got a panel down here at the back that goes in place where this window is. Now I took it out for the summer, but during the winter I put that panel in place along with a, 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 a like a reflective uh, sun uh, sun uh, bubble pack type stuff that goes on the back side, and that keeps it you know, really nice and toasty in here. Don't lose any. I hardly lose any kind of uh, temperature from inside. You notice I've got. An overhead range, right? I've got an electric uh, griddle if I need one. Underneath this, right? If you lift this up, there's a two burner propane stove, right? So I can actually have cook if I need to use propane. But of course, I usually cook on wood. I mean, propane's okay for in the morning if you're making breakfast. Uh, if you notice, uh, I got a nice picture of a wolf up here. Yeah, I like. I really like that picture. I've been having it for a while. Storage uh, pod for survival food, which is so full I can't hardly even lift it up. It's got beans and 25 pound bag of rice, and it's got uh, beef jerky and honey and sugar and salt and and uh, pa uh, regular uh, what do you call them uh, meal dinner meals in the bag when you pack it deals like like uh, stroganoff and. And broccoli and cheese and full cheese, uh, you know, noodles and Caesar salad. Same thing with the cooler. Got the same thing. That's got a fully, fully, you know, functional. So, you know, it keeps, doesn't keep, I'm not using it to keep cold. I'm just using it for storage. That way animals and small critters can't get in and, and eat my food. Of course, I put this, uh, you know, power bar here. So I just put, hooked up over there onto the inverter. Now I also have, you see that, I got a plug in if I want to plug it into a, uh, uh, where you outside at source, I can run things off the inside, off the outside source. Now I've got the generator run run meter, okay, starting function, and here's my control for actually checking, you know, water level and uh, sewage level. If I got a new black water tank in that, okay, water electric water pump is on there. Now in here I've got the bathroom, but in reality, right now. You know, I, I do have to pull things out if I ever have to use a restroom, but I got a cooler in there full of food, and then I've got all my coats hanging on the coat rack inside, so I have to kind of spread the coats out, pull a cooler out if I ever want to use the restroom here. All right? So there's supplies in there. Notice I have a small handheld Black & Decker vacuum cleaner, and uh, I've also now I'm ready to see this. This is so full I can barely even open it, but that has 
what you saw in the survival bag, 20 times that amount of, I've got stuff like bioactive silver hydroxide, which is uh, good for your uh, immune system, jelly seal for gas, uh, stingies, uh, bacitracin of every kind, uh, so you supports like for your for your ankle or arm, hot compresses, uh, just and this here is for on your belt, but this has got just about everything you'd ever want to use in case of an emergency for you know an accident. But I usually carry that big bag. Of course, I've got something that most people don't see anymore. I just happen to get a deal on this. Strike anywhere matches, a whole bunch of them. I got the whole box full of them, so I got those strike anywhere matches in there. Then, of course, you got the rest of the stuff here, like Pepsi AC, uh, vitamin C, uh, uh, hand warmers, and then right here, every kind of antibiotic you can you can actually uh, dexacycline, uh, everything you want to use for MRSA, uh, some of the other really bad infections. What it does is it works by blocking the uh, the bacteria uh, process for uh, wanting to, to uh, duplicate itself and, and grow, so it, it keeps it from, uh, it actually starves the bacteria to death. All right, now come down here, you see this other cooler I got here in between, the same thing. It's full of food. I mean, from everything from mashed potatoes in boxes, uh, powdered milk and, and uh, things. The uh, other containers you see down here on the floor, same thing, rice. Powdered milk. I got two five-gallon buckets under here also that happen to have the same thing. One's got a 25-pound bag of sugar. The other one has about 25-pound bag of flour. All right, so I can keep that. I've got all my silverware and stuff inside this, along with some plates and, and uh, knives and stuff that slides out of the way and the cushion comes up so I can get into it real easy. Inside all these, right here. If you look inside, I've got nothing but food. I mean, it's unbelievable. I've got uh, some of the stuff like beans and cream of mushroom soup and uh, salt and yeah, then of course the same thing with all these others. These others are completely full. All right. You want to take a look at this. All right. See, same thing. Oops, see, stuff's falling out. That was a can of uh, cream of mushroom soup. They oatmeal, beans, honey, sugar, flour. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Same thing within this. Starch, all uh, gratin potatoes, and all those Nord uh, uh, dinners in a bag, steel cut uh, uh, oatmeal, spaghetti, uh, peanut butter in packets, and crackers in packets in the big cans. They store for a long time, all right? Inside the, the tote that's underneath, I've got uh, pumpkin bread mixes, and I've got uh, uh, Ricoli uh, throat lozenges and uh, new, uh, Oriental noodle dinners. Okay, now come around here and I'll show you some of this other stuff. <coughs> of course, I got my arrows for my uh, sling bow, and I've got arrows in there also for I got a crossbow, right? And a 10 million can of power spot beam. Well, that's going to be mounted in between the 40 millimeter rocket launchers that are on top, as you can see, the, the mount up on top where the bolts come through. I've about finished putting that together with cameras. That way you can actually have a real defense against road raiders and stuff. And once this stuff starts going down, I can then escape and evade along with maybe even blast them off the face of the plant. Now the thing you see there is, that is actually a three camera I actually a reverse, it's got a rear view camera hooked up now. But then I've got a box here, right? Which allows me for two more cameras and those are the ones I'm gonna mount in the rocket launchers so that they can actually see what I'm targeting. All I gotta do is put a overlay crosshair on that. The joystick controller that makes it turn left, right, up, down, whatever the crosshair falls on, that's where the rocket's going, all right? But this is one of my favorites, this is my, my whole total, uh, you know, Apocalypse meal. Look like I've got a um, medical, chemical, biological, uh, and gas gas mask, the one with the hood and protective Gore-Tex cover. My K-bar knife was my web gear. All right. I made the, and actually look at this: the, the wood stove and the table are mounted on the old mounts where the old uh, the seats used to be. I cut the old seats off, 
re-welded them onto the place and I can actually pop them in and out if I wanted to remove the, uh, the, the smoker cover and then I undo that light mount and I can actually take the, knock the, uh, the uh, double wall flue up out of, out of the pipe and I can remove the whole stove if I wanted to for maintenance or cleaning, okay? Now, we step back out here, come around to the front and we have full size pack for military, got all sorts of survival food, clothing, tent. It's got my uh, elbow pads, knee pads, gloves, combat gloves, and then I've got the full, a real uh, army uh, park. I mean, not parka, a uh, uh, wet gear for rain. Right? Got that installed. Got all my weather, winter clothes all packed away in my uh, uh, duffel bag. All right. Come around the front here. You see that front there? That's what I've got. This is this van. It was in such great shape. I just couldn't believe when I got it. I got a heck of a deal on this. Now look at this. There's the the pipe. The the smokestack comes out with a rain cap on it. The van is in such good condition. Look, it's got a 360 motor. We get okay gas mod. I'm working on other ideas. Like if you've ever heard of a gasifier a wood gasifier i'm thinking about maybe installing one on this on the back and that way it can run off a of wood gas but if you see that this looks really nice completely open very very it's insulated i've got these if you notice the, the, the bubble pack panels those going all i've got them for all the windows so what it does is it actually seals and keeps the the weather out heat or cold i got one for the back here too all right so then it's, of course, I've got uh, tools for everything, jacks, uh, more. I got totes that are underneath the bed that you can't see that have all sorts of more food and, uh, and food supplies. Okay, you've got a gas can, Gary, uh, Jerry, uh, well, I wouldn't say Jerry, but a gas can mounted on the back and a spare tire, too, along with my plug in hookup for fresh water and for power to run to an external source of power. And I do have a secondary generator besides the one generator. I've got a Ry Ryobi 1800, and it's packed away also. But I just thought you might get a kick out of it. And look, there's the rear view camera up on top, which has infrared, so I can you know, be parked somewhere at night and see if somebody's sneaking up on me. But anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy this, all right? This is one of my best creations. I built a lot of race cars and hot rods and four-wheel drives, but I had the most fun with this. This really is nice. All right? Well, you guys, I'll talk to you next time on the upside, upslide, right? <laughs> Have a good one, buddy.